Hello, everybody. I'm Ian from Subpixel. Joining me today is Will Crosby and Kyle Bailey. We're going to be talking about the hottest release of the 2020 holiday season, Cyberpunk 2077. I finished the game. Will, you finished the game? Is that right? I finished the game thrice. Wow. Uh, Kyle, how many times have you finished the game? Uh, I finished it once just to get the main story sort of finished, but I haven't gone back and done any of the other endings, but I've watched a couple on YouTube. Okay. All bad. Okay, well, <laughs> you know, that's a good segue into uh, what I want to talk about today is everything cyberpunk. There are going to be spoilers in this. If you didn't get the hint from the title of this video, we're going to be talking about everything cyberpunk 2077. I came out of this game feeling a little conflicted and I just want to talk about it. Everything about it. We're putting everything on the table. <laughs> So if you don't want to hear that stuff, turn the video off right now. Go watch series one, episode one of Taskmaster. It's a fantastic UK show. <laughs> Can't stop watching it. But if you do want some spoilers, if you want some hot cyberpunk 2077 talk in action, mm. you came to the right place. I want to kick it off with some quick impressions. Uh, think of it like a tweet, 140 characters or less. I just want to get an idea of where where you guys are. So, so I'll kick it off. I'll give an example. Um, I think cyberpunk 2077 is a game with a lot of fantastic ideas that is constantly marred by bugs, poor performance, bad execution, and just downright awful design choices. Uh, Will, how about you? What's your quick impression? I think Cyberpunk 2077 is a bad game and shouldn't have come out. Wow, that's, that's strong. Uh, Kyle, how about you? Uh, I would say it is beautiful and unrealized okay okay um so let's dive into it but first we have to talk about the elephant in the room this game has one of the most controversial launches of all time and it basically comes down to performance and quality sure there's a there's a definitely a side story about how developers have been treated and crunch leading up to it and i don't want to minimize that but just looking at the finished product of the game there's definitely questions of performance and quality. So I, I'm gonna kick it off first, Kyle, with a question for you. What platform were you playing the game on and what was your take or experience with the performance of the game? So I'm playing on PC. I've got uh, an RTX 2070 Super, which is, you know, it's a last gen card technically now that the, the 300 or 3000 series has come out, but it's still more than enough to play this game on at least high settings with around you know, dips notwithstanding 40 to 60 FPS with on, on high to ultra on certain settings. So um, as far as graphical fidelity goes, I had a really great time just looking at the world of cyberpunk. I mean, it mm -hmm. really is, it, it's, it's so, it, there's so much depth to at least the visual design in the city. And yeah. so much work has obviously and clearly been put into making this city seem like look and feel like a city in aspects as far as you know visual aspects are concerned what that means as far as the city actually acting like a city you know that i don't think that they even came close to to, to what rockstar is able to do um and you know this was touted as being you know the next generation of open world you know city exploration game and i don't think it even comes close to tapping into that at all that's, that's good to hear that on PC, you were able to see and not really have significant performance issues and to kind of hit that, that 40 to 60 FPS, that sounds fantastic, especially for a game that has such high graphical demands as this. Uh, Will, you and I, I know we both played it on the Xbox Series X. I'm curious to hear what your experience was playing it on a next-gen console. Yeah, well, actually hearing about Kyle, I have the same graphics card. I should have just bought it for PC. Um, <laughs> but regardless, yeah, I played on the Series uh, X, and I, like I thought it looked okay. Uh, I didn't think it looked amazing, like graphics-wise. Performance issues. I was I ran it in performance mode, which to my eyeballs seemed like a constant sixty. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it. It only ever dipped if you switch it over to quality. But when I switched over to quality, I didn't notice anything change except the frame rate go down. So I don't know actually what... It was probably higher resolution, but I couldn't tell. Yeah. Um, I had I had a lot of bugs. Yeah. I had so many bugs. Yeah. I saved every single one of them. 
Um, <laughs> thanks to the Xbox share feature. Wait, Wait I'm uh, sorry. Pilation is that video. a joke or did you really? I saved <laughs> I, I probably missed one or two. But like, I saved This is going to sound so like a joke, but, but literally, how did you ever finish the game? Because I would have been spending so much time pressing the share. I, I should say, I, I, I probably, I, I saved every instance of a unique bug. Oh, okay. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, which, from T-posing to me being launched 300 yards <laughs> behind me three times in the attempt to go through a window. That, I, that um, ha also <laughs> happened to me, and it doesn't make any sense. Also, windows like, don't break. Yeah. Like they, oh. don't, they don't shatter. They, the individual pieces break off. But. Oh, it's so yeah um yeah it's just the the technical issues whether they are because of glitches or they were because they implemented a bad technical system marred this game beyond anything for me like it was so rough and i mean that in the sense like obviously glitches and bugs but also like the pathing system for cars was based on straight lines Mm -hmm. And like, if a car couldn't move forward, it didn't know how to go around the thing. Nothing, so nothing then, reacts to you. It just yeah. stops. Um, it was just, and then on the flip side of that, there were enough things that seemed off that at times I was saying to myself, is this a glitch or is this the way they intended it to be? Like, is Johnny Silverhand glitching out because he's Johnny Silverhand or is he glitching out because this game didn't know I would be standing here? Yeah. And they just had him walk through me. Like, yep. it's stuff like that. It's just... And the Series X, I, I want to say, the Series X, as far as I can tell, held up fine. Uh, I know it's the, playing the Xbox One version, if you can call it that. Um, but, yeah, it, it seemed to run fine as far as uh, frame rate and stuff like that. Other than when it first came out, I remember I told you there were, like, three or four times that it just hard-locked for 30 seconds. And yeah. then fast forwarded everything. Yeah, so, I, I will that. say, I will say on PC at least, there were obviously bugs and glitches and stuff. I never had any major hitching or game breaking bugs where I had to restart. Th that That's never good. happened in my. I've had I think eighty five hours in it, and it's never wow. happened. So I think it really does make a big difference just having it on the PC platform as opposed mm -hmm. to consoles. Um, yeah. But as far as visual stuff is concerned, bugs and glitches still one hundred percent there. Yeah. yeah, and uh, as as far as that, that game only crashed twice for me because I, granted, I threw a lot of grenades, um, <laughs> and I think that's why. And then as far as, like, actually being hardlocked or, like, restarting or something, the second quest of the game, I just had to reload because it wouldn't, wouldn't, po wouldn't say I finished an objective. I oh, just okay. reloaded a save, and then it, it kind of, like, fixed itself. Yeah, yeah, my experience was very similar to yours, Will, except I didn't have any... I, I had two soft locks where the console would lock for, like, three seconds, and then the game would, would keep going. That only happened twice. I didn't have any crashes, and I didn't have any... I didn't have any times where I had to reload a save. There was definitely points where, like, a UI element would get stuck on, a, on the screen, or an optional objective was not clearing. You know, you're supposed to talk to an NPC, and the talk prompt is just not there. Um, yeah. But thankfully, I didn't have to do any any save reloading. I, I will say, different from you guys, though, I played the game on the Series X for a majority of it, but I also played a couple hours on the Xbox One X. And um, the Xbox One X is, like, objectively the fastest console of the previous generation, the generation that just ended. And to be clear, we're not playing the Series X version of cyberpunk we are playing the xbox one version of cyberpunk on a series x and playing it on a one x it was not good it would frequently drop down to single digit frame rates um there would definitely be more pop in uh the load times are longer though that's kind of expected of an older gen console but basically my setup is i have a series x in the living room and i have a one x in the bedroom now so occasionally I'll, I'll game in the bedroom if i just feel like being in there or you know let's say my fiance is doing something in the kitchen and making a lot of noise and i'm like you know what, let me just get, go game in peace in the, in the bedroom and when i did that and i was playing cyberpunk i only did it twice and both times i was like i don't want to play any main missions i don't want to play any story heavy side missions i want to do stuff that doesn't matter when the frame rate drops or things bug out because i was terrified that i would do a story mission and some sequence would chug at three frames per second and it would completely lose any sort of significance or impact upon me because of that. So this is, you absolutely should not play this game on a last gen console. It doesn't matter if you have a PS4 Pro or a One X, 
do not play this game on those consoles. It's not good. It barely should runs. Should never have been released. Yeah, should it should never have been released. Should not have been released for those consoles. Um, I, there is one other thing about the Series X that that Will you didn't mention, um, which is HDR. So this game does have HDR on the Series X. Um, it basically has an HDR flag checked. So as soon as you launch the game, if your console has HDR enabled and your TV is set up for HDR, it will start playing the game in HDR. It's not actually HDR. It's something really bad or stupid they did. It's some sort of algorithm, HDR algorithm they put on the game because basically it, it if, if it's true HDR, then shadows and blacks should be black. As inappropriate as that sounds, <laughs> if you have a black color on the screen, it should be black. And playing this game on a Series X on HDR in, I have a fantastic TV. It's an incredible TV. I love it. And there were the blacks were gray, very gray. It got to the point where yeah. there's a scene during like one of the first uh, Johnny Silverhand flashbacks where you're in a helicopter at night and the camera forces you to look at the inside of the helicopter and it's supposed to be dark, like almost pitch black. And my TV, well, it wasn't my TV, it's the console version of the game, did the thing where it's hard to describe, but you know how sometimes in really bad image quality situations, black is not black. It's just like this green color that has like radiuses of circle around it. Yeah. That's what it did. This game, it should not have <laughs> HDR as an option. You can't turn it off in the game. You have to disable it on your console to then not allow it to boot into HDR. And it's, it's awful because you would see side-by-side -side screenshots of like the PC version that you played, Kyle, and it looks fantastic because there's like all sorts of uh, ambiance and mystery and the shadows, etc. And then you see it on the console and it's grayed out. It just alters the colors, it alters the shadows. And I know it sounds like an HDR nerd, but there's a huge difference. And the game just does not is look that, good. Is that exclusive to Microsoft's consoles or can no. you get HDR on, on no, it's just Microsoft? No, or, no, or it's, it's just, uh... so according to Digital Foundry and other people who did the reviews, it's uh, PS5 has the exact same issue. Where basically, okay, I wasn't, uh, yeah, and, and I would assume the One X and the PS4 Pro, which also have HDR, will yeah. have the exact same issue. Basically, they they checked the box that said HDR and they put some HDR mode in the game, but it is not HDR. It actually looks worse than than SDR. So, um, anything else on performance or quality? I think across the board, we can all agree that the game looks fantastic, but it really doesn't run as well as it should, and it has way too many bugs. Does that sound like a good summary? Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say the one thing is I I keep thinking of this game in comparison to like a Bethesda game, you know, like Fallout 4, Fallout 3, Fallout 76, etc. Skyrim, etc. How the bugs in this game, they didn't bother me as much. They're and funny. I, and I think it's because the, the world building in this game and the story had me so enraptured that when I came across a bug, it was more like, oh, that's a shame. You know, it, it was a detriment in a positive experience. Whereas I feel like in, there are plenty of other games, like for example, Fallout 4, I stopped playing because there were so many bugs and issues that it was a mediocre, for me, it was a mediocre game with a lot of bugs on top. I don't know, did you guys feel that way as well? That where the bugs just weren't quite bothering you as much as they probably should? So I, I mean, in the past like three weeks or so, I've watched so many just compilation videos of bugs on YouTube from this game. And all of them are either just so ridiculous that it's funny or they're just genuinely like something happens in a weird way that you wouldn't expect it, which is a classic, you know, there's just a glitch and it's just mm -hmm. funny. When it happened to me in the game, it wasn't so much that it was funny, it was just like, especially if it happened during like a, a a more cinematic or emotional moment you know it was just like completely took me out of the game and yeah it just it really deadened the emotional impact behind a lot of the major story beats just simply because it's like it doesn't it, like it looks good a hundred percent of the time w when it's when it's not having glitches but as soon as that glitch comes down it's like oh i'm playing a game i can't get into this story like johnny um Johnny Silverhand did his sort of 
uh, you're talking to, um, I think it was Rogue, and he like mm-hmm. materializes in. Well, he materialized in, but it was like block face. Like his his face hadn't rendered, so it was just like <laughs> it was just like blocky Keanu yeah. Reeves, and it was like. I, it was just like that's unfortunate. Like that's that's yeah. really sad that they couldn't get like this is a this isn't a side quest. It's a major like hundreds of people designed and created and implemented all of the assets that have to come together for this one moment to happen. And it's like that didn't work for a major character. And yeah. it's just it's really unfortunate that that sort of thing happens constantly. Yep. Yeah. Um. But I, I, yeah, I definitely. I, I, I definitely agree with you, Kyle, that that the graphics are phenomenal. There, there are definitely moments in the game where they do a good job of kind of like forcing you towards a vista viewpoint of the city or of the desert surrounding Night City. And it looks fantastic. And there, there is like the art style and aesthetic of that game is incredible. It's just a shame that that the performance and the bugs and the glitches constantly take away from that. And like you said, Every time I felt like I was sucked in, there was something holding me back or kicking me out of that over and over again. Yep. Yeah, I think I'm the opposite of you, Ian. This is one of the first games where I've ever, like, the glitches and bugs actively made me want to stop playing the game. Wow. Because I was so annoyed by them. Like, I played one of the entire endings with no gun because <laughs> it would not load. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. Did you have to use like a sword or something, or just all like? No, I used the gun. It just wasn't there. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just Great. did a muscle flash in the air. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good segue, though. I think it's time for us to talk about the story of Cyberpunk 2077. So let's kind of start from the beginning. I want to know. I, I chose Corpo. Will you chose Corpo as well as your backstory? Um, yeah. And Kyle, did you also choose Corpo? I'm seeing from your nodding. I gotcha. I did. Yeah. I. You know I. It's not so much that I want to know what the other beginnings are. It's just, I, I'm curious if you guys feel the same way. I, as soon as the game started and they started laying out that corporal backstory in the first like 30, 40 minutes, I was in. I was like, look, I know I'm not going to be in this corporal forever based on the, the marketing material. I know something bad's going to happen, but let me play this out for a couple hours. Let me play out this storyline. And then it was just like immediately like, nope, we're screwing over. you over. <laughs> you're out. Yeah. Let's do a montage sequence. And now you're into the normal game like everybody else. I was so yeah. disappointed by that. It sounds like you guys felt that way as well. I was so yeah. mad. Go go for it, Will. Uh, sorry. I, I was legit mad. I was like, I, I wanted like... yeah. Like in my in my brain, I was like, "Come on, like design one quest where I go to like, like do this cool corpo stuff where I go to kill this woman or something and like have yeah. it affect me in some way." I was just it was so annoying. So I I had reservations about the whole life path thing from the get go because they were obviously you know over promising under delivering on everything. But when I started, I sort of had the same reaction as you, Ian, where it was like that first 30, 40 minutes, even when you're just in, um, you're you're in your office and you, yeah. you see just like people in these glass cubicles, you know, floor to ceiling, like doing work. There's like all this really great ambient, like red light everywhere that highlights different aspects and people, like you walk by people and they're like, they like look at you and they'll like be talking about either you or like, oh, did you see that guy over there? Who's like, he's got to go up to whatever his name's office. He's going to be in Mm -hmm. trouble. Or it's like you overhear just conversations about basically the corpo lifestyle as it is, as it exists within Night City, where it's like, oh yeah, I, you know, I spent, you know, 20,000, you know, whatever on this thing. And it's like, oh, I didn't care that, you know, someone got hurt over it or something. It's just whatever. (laughs) I was like, that's great. Like that's, if that's the level of, sort of interaction that I can expect moving forward, that'll be great. And then immediately, as soon as, you know, that that sort of introduction period is over, it just stops. And the only time it even came close to reaching that level again, where Will, you said you wanted like more interactions with people that you would have known, you know, if you're if you're now on the streets, like you still have contacts in the corpo world. Um, you would you would want more interactions with those types of people maybe they bring you on missions they bring you in as a consultant for you know some company or something like that and you have to actually use your corpo background to facilitate you know a a, a story beat or something like that but the only time i felt like that was the 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 mission that they showed you know two years ago at e3 with uh what's her name from um slick back hair woman ali mcbeal uh 
Is that her? I don't no. think that's her. I can't remember. I can't remember her name. I don't um, remember it either. But she, it was like, it was like you could, if you were Corpo, you could go a little bit into her backstory where it was like, how, she's like, how do you know, like, how to do this? You're like, I used yeah. to work for Arasaka. Oh, Meredith and I was like, Stout? I want, I want, yeah, Meredith Stout. I, I, I wanted to say Meredith, um, uh, or Madeline Stillwell from the boys. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, Meredith Stout. And that's the only other other than the uh, Pirellas' uh, mission where, you, you know, you're dealing with like the mayor and stuff like that. Yeah. You really don't have like any any reason to pick a life path yeah. one way or the other, because you know that in anyone else's playthrough where it says Corpo in yours, it's just going to say Street Kid in theirs. It's yeah, just yeah. going to be, all it is is going to be a line of dialogue with, with that slightly tweaked. It's going to get yeah. you the same result. And, and that's, that's you know, not what people were expecting to have happen when they chose these three supposedly, you know, world-defining pathways. You know, they all just end up converging at the same place. And it's it's just, it's not worth it. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think, I think for me... I could have forgiven that if if after that intro sequence, your background doesn't really matter anymore. If that intro sequence was at least longer, you know, you know, Will, like you said, like they basically set up, they're like, hey, we need you to do this mission for us. And you're gonna do a little prep work and then you're gonna do the mission. And in my head, I was going, great. You know, I knew this game was supposed to be a little bit heisty. So like, this is introducing me to like the mechanics while at the same time laying out basic mission structure. You do some prep and then you do a big job. And you don't even do that. Basically, as soon as you leave your office, they're just like, boom, you've been betrayed. And then they show a montage yeah. of all these things that you should have been doing over the first four or five hours of the game to basically build up your credibility and, and your experience on the street. And it was just such a, it felt like it, it was, I don't know, I, I, I can't, I can't be in their mind as game developers and game designers, but it felt like they they thought about the first 10, 12 hours of a GTA game where you're like a nobody and you're doing small jobs. And they said, that's too boring. Let's do a 30 second montage of that and then get you to the end of that. And, and while I it's, don't I don't fully disagree with them thinking that it's too boring that 12 hours, I don't think that means you get rid of all of it. And, and yeah. it was just really, it, really wonky. It felt to me like it was cut content. like. Like they had yeah. plans to do more, and well, they the were just like they were like, well, okay, like, I mean that it's funny because I think it was uh, Digital Foundry talked about that montage scene and how it was like, it, it's not a cinematic, like they're yeah. actually rendering out those locations and those and the, all those assets, yeah. and it's like so you know they're you know those things are there. And it just it struck me as like, well, why would you why would you spend time building everything like that and and animating everything like the just the one thing that always sticks out in my head is when Jackie rams that guy into the dumpster. Yeah, like like you're just like chasing him. And I was like, like somebody like painstakingly like planned that out like a bunch of people probably did. And it's like mm -hmm. if it was just a cinematic like you, you I, I think, you know, th there's a little bit less maybe not work put into it but maybe you need less people for it when you actually have it in game rendering like that like it just it seemed to me like there was way more that was there that for some reason either you know they're saying well maybe we can do a flashback and do dlc like you get to yeah. spend more time with jackie which everybody wants to spend yeah. more time with jackie because yeah. <laughs> he's amazing he's yeah. one of the best characters of the game and he's only there for like if you if you only do the story missions he's only there for like two hours yeah, yeah. like that that that's it and and, the and yeah the weird thing is that i just want to point out is they do that whole montage and then you do a mission where you're tutorialized again yeah yeah and i'm like it doesn't make sense because he's like oh you need a refresher and i was like i no <laughs> i just I did all this stuff in the supposed montage and now you're yeah. giving me a refresh. like i don't know why they didn't like have the corpus stuff mini montage okay Hey, uh, Chumba, here's our first Merc mission together. Jackie and V, let's do it. You do that, then it's then it fades into another montage. Like, even if you're going to go through the effort, like, yeah. story-wise, the tutorial... Yeah, finish the tutorial before the montage. Yeah. And again, like, to Ian's point, too, that another mission there where you do a heist or something is the perfect place to put a little little tutorial mm -hmm. and, yeah. like, work that all out. I don't know. Yeah. Just, it, I think it definitely was cut content. Um, so let's skip let's skip to the to the other side of the game in terms of the ending of the game. Well, let me let me just let me just ask a question. Is it just me or was the main content of this game very short? 
in terms of number of missions. Did you guys it's feel like that way? Short. 20, 20 hours? Tw yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe 25? I, it's, it's less than that because I, I did maybe a dozen side missions and then I mainlined the rest of the game. And it, I finished in 22 hours. So if you just mainline story missions, you could probably get it done in 20 or less. Um, it, it, it felt like, so basically you have like the whole tutorial session, right? And then you see, I, I don't want to call it tutorial, but you have the whole pre-credit sequence and then you hit credit screen. And then there's like a quick three branch. So there's three branches of missions, right? And then there's just like, you finish this, I don't even want to call it a branch. It's just like three nodes. It's like, you finish this node, you finish this node, you finish this node. And then all of a sudden it's the, it's the ending. And it felt like there should have at least been another series of nodes. Instead, it, it just felt like, I know, I know the way they broke down the missions, there's more than this, but it felt like there are less than 10 main missions, which is not a lot for a game of this scale, of this scope, of this size. And it was, it was kind of frustrating to me. The, also the, no, go you go, Kyle. Uh, I was just gonna, if you're looking at, like, you're talking about the 10 main missions for the actual story with, with Johnny, right? Like the, the stuff that's centered around Arasaka and, and Johnny, or are you talking also about like side I, I, characters that are like romanceable or stuff like that. Yeah, no no side characters, just the main stuff that you have to do to get through. Yeah. Yeah, I I definitely think like 10 15 hours for that. Um yeah. Yeah, it was it's so it's, short. it's just it's and it's great. I mean at least like the writing is Yeah. One thing you can't fault, you know, CD Project for is they're great at writing awesome yep. characters and and putting those characters in really unique situations. Like I Judy is such a cool just like fully realized character and her her side mission i didn't i didn't romance her but i i completed it to the end where she spoilers like she she goes off um to seattle mm -hmm. or i think she goes off to, to to oregon and then she ends up in seattle um that section where you go scuba diving and like you go through her past and there's like little mementos you can find and and it's just this like slow atmospheric the music is that's another thing also is the music is spot on in yep. the entire game it's it's fantastic um but it just that was one of the few moments where like there were no glitches like everything worked the way it was supposed to and i i got it i was like this is this yep. is what i want the game to be the entire time and then like it ends and she'll text you for a little bit and then you never hear from her again and it's yeah. like uh, it, it, it the game does that so many times with those side characters where it's like and, and that's what happens in every other game which is why i was sad because i was expecting more i was expecting yes. more interaction i was yep. expecting after the story had ended for there to be something something else to do with them to see them in the world to like if if you do carrie's um storyline i want to see him play a concert like I, yeah. I want to go see him perform, yeah. if or or go into a recording session with him or something like like he should be, he should be actively doing stuff. Yeah. And same thing with with River. You know, I know that there's only so many you know missions you can do with like him working on cases and stuff, but he should be at you know the police precinct. You should be able to go there and interact with him or or if if he. Um, I think he says he's a private detective. At, it, he'll be a yeah. private detective. He should be like in the city, like looking for an office or so, I don't know mm -hmm. so, something. They should be. They should have lives because that's what we were promised. You know, they should they should have lives after their story or their interaction with us technically ends. And I know that that's you know that's leaps and bounds ahead of where every other open world game is right now. But that's again what we were told it would be. Yeah. So it, it it's just. I don't know. It, it's like the more the more you play it after those missions are over, the less I care about what happened. Where it's just yeah. like, okay, well, this yeah. is just like every other open world game now. Yeah. Well, w while we're on the romance stuff, uh, this is a little bit of mechanics, but it's mostly story. Uh, I romanced River Ward, and uh, Did I'll you save play my female or male. Uh, so I'm I'm a, I'm a female with a big hog. Great. Just letting everyone awesome. know. Uh, and what about uh, because that's exactly what I wanted to be. It's the perfect human form. <laughs> so, anyways, I start. I I do River. I well, I haven't done River oh. Ward yet, but I do this stuff with River Ward. And the whole time, my annoyance mainly was they never acknowledged that I'm not just a regular lady. Like at no point oh, is yeah. that ever said, ever like put out there. And then like you go and you at the end of the mission line you 
have sex. And the whole time I was like, River, I have a penis. <laughs> just, want, just want you to know. Just, just, just a heads yeah. up. That's what character never told you. But regardless, that's, uh, I'll say I have other problems with the romance stuff. But, we'll but talk quick, about that in mechanics. That's... That's a very good point, though, is that I, I think a theme we're starting to develop in this is that a lot of it is they're implementing things like choices, etc., that are barely implemented and that have little yeah. impact and are not fully implemented in a futuristic way and future in terms of we thought this would be a revolution in game design, but in reality, it's not. It's a lot of surface level implementation. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, and the other problem with uh, just to finish my thought with River in the end so at the end of the river stuff he's like oh you want to be girlfriend or boyfriend and i'm like you know what sure let's be girlfriend boyfriend like that's cool i want to see where that goes whatever so then not much happens after that and then in one of the endings they're like oh call your call your loved one so i call up river he's like hey what's up i can't talk I right like, now right i was like i've been <laughs> gone for like i don't know a week or something he's like oh how's yeah. it going how's that stuff with the chip in your head i'm like what you're we're in love boyfriend. sir Although, can I be um, honest with you? Um, based on a lot of women's complaints about their boyfriend, that sounds very accurate to how a boyfriend <laughs> behaves. That's true. So, That's true. I um, mean, they grown for realism. Yeah. No, I. So I. I played. I played male V, and I. I played him as gay because obviously that's what I am. And when I got to the river end section. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I actually made a Reddit post about this on the Cyberpunk 2077 subreddit, and uh, it got like 80 some comments. There were there were there were a lot of people agreeing with me, a lot of people disagreeing with me. Um, at the end of the river romance, he takes you up, you know, a away from his his sister and and her kids and everything. He's like, I want to show you something, and it's you know, it's very like obviously romantic, <laughs> and he's like flirting with you a little bit. He's like yeah. doing some jokes. You you have to use him to get over the fence to unlock it which doesn't make yeah, sense because he could just bust through it um and it's very well animated he goes up the ladder in front of you mm. so you can look at his ass the entire time which is great and then <laughs> you get up on the side and he's like i have something for you here's a here's my my pistol or my oh. revolver because i don't oh. need it anymore or whatever <laughs> euphemism 100 mm -hmm. and then if you play male v and and want to romance river um, pre, pre uh, prefacing this, I didn't know who exactly was romanceable in the game. Like, like from mm -hmm. the outset, I was like, I knew Judy was, you know, you could romance her if you were a female V. I didn't know anything else about any of the other side characters. So I'm going into this fully thinking he's been flirting with me like the entire time. Like the, he's not just being friendly. Like he, yeah. he's 100% like coming on to me and he's got like a ring in his right ear, which is typically a sign that you're, you're gay. Um, and he's got leather pants, like really, really tight form-fitting leather pants on, which no straight man would wear either yeah. in 2020 or 2077. <laughs> and he, <laughs> um, he, he like looks at you and you're given a, a moment to, uh, I forget, it's like you can, you can respond to him in like three different ways or you can lean in and kiss him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, we're going to do it. We're going to go kiss him. So you go and hit the kiss button and you lean in and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, sorry. And it's it's so clumsily handled. Uh, I was what? like, I was like offended. And I was like, I, I was actually for like for like a minute. Mm -hmm. I was like, did I like completely read this guy wrong? Like, is, is that the level of realism that I'm dealing with that I like? I, I yeah. fell for this this fake character that was just written so well and come to find out everything that he does with you plays out the exact same way say, whether okay. or not you're male or female <laughs> oh, so what wow. you're so what you're supposed to read as just being bros and being like close friends buddy as male v you're supposed to read as being romantically interested if you're female there's no difference at all oh so that's if you're up. if you're playing it as gay it's essentially gay baiting it's yeah. essentially just yeah. just saying like yeah here's the here's the perfect man for this game because i don't really care about carrie like he's not he's not my type anyway but um it, it was just like set up so perfectly and i was actually i shut the game off like like five minutes after that because i was like i was so you. angry and upset i was like i cannot believe mm -hmm. that they didn't take the time to be like 
I, I went back and watched a lot of the playthrough from other people's perspective on YouTube, and at no point does Rivers say like, "Oh, my ex-girlfriend" or like "my ex-wife" or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like he, he doesn't he doesn't label himself. So you only have what he tells you to yeah. go off of. And if you're playing if you're playing as a gay male V, you read that as being romantically interested. And yes. the fact that they even give you the kiss option is yeah. like. Yeah. Why would you like why like I it's a it's a power fantasy, right? The entire yeah. game is based around the fact that you build up your character, you get stronger, you start from nothing, you reach your end goal and you get rewarded for it. My reward for fulfilling Rivers entire side quest was to say, "Whoa, bro, I'm not gay. Let's just yeah. sit here and drink on top of this, Man. you know, very old <laughs> somewhat still romantic water tower and gaze out upon the city." But I'm not gay, so don't worry. I, I'm and not. Was, I was so upset. <laughs> I'm not glad it happened to you, but I'm glad you're telling that story because the same thing happened to me with me and Pan Am, and really? I was like, oh, I can r romance her, oh. whatever, blah blah. blah. I, I do. It wasn't the kiss thing. That never happened. But I was like, oh, I can romance Pan Am, and at no point does she ever like. There's like options like, hey, we should get a room together, and she doesn't mm -hmm. say anything bad about it. She's like, oh, let's just be friends for now. Because you just met her. But at no point does she ever come out and say, like, hey, I just want to be friends with you. Or, hey, I'm not a lesbian. Or, hey, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. this whole time I'm thinking I can... And I bet it's the same... I bet she does the same thing to a male V that you can then ro go yeah. do stuff with she her. she did that to me. I, I was like... Yeah. And it worked out because I, I, as the player, eventually, after she nothing happened, I was like, oh, you know what? The... I thought, or maybe they did do this, that they did a really well-crafted friendship. Because at the end, I was like, oh, I like being friends with Pan Am now. And there was one moment, like, at... There's a moment where you're hiding from the dust storm mm -hmm. in that room, and you're, like, you, you talking to Pan Am stuff. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah and, and I forget if it's Johnny or her makes a joke about it being a five-star hotel. And then she's, like, she's going to crawl up to go to sleep, and then you're still awake, and then, like, Johnny appears... And then he makes like a cute little joke about being the bellhop or something. And it's just like this really nice moment, which is for you, it was the Judy thing. But that's where I like cyberpunk. I was like, if the whole game was this feeling I have right now, I, this game would be the best game ever made. Yeah. Like yeah. that was my moment for that. But to hear that, that's what happened to you with you with river. And like, it's just, it's so simple to have a character say like, Hey, I'm this sexual preference or, Hey, I feel like you're coming on to me. I just want to be friends. It's like so easy to do that and like i think it's exactly what you said it is like hardcore gay baiting like yeah. bringing it that far to be like whoa dude do you have a boner right now that's gross <laughs> yeah. and I, I, it like, like it i man. i give them i give them props for the for the writing of that and and the the whole setup of that because it is if you are playing female v and you do romance him it's great yeah, like, he, awesome. like he's he's such a cool character he's a family guy and it's like what's not hot about that um, and it's just like it hurt it it actually not like not like hurt like a breakup but it was like I wasn't expecting to feel this way about a video game and I was like I was like maybe that's what they were going after but then at the same time I was like I think they were just lazy and they just wrote it the same way or left it the same way and just all they did was change the ending slightly where it's like yes yeah. sex no sex like that's all they did and it's just a and different it, voice actor yeah yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, and you know, and, hearing, yeah, that's crazy. hearing you guys say that, I, I was going to say that I felt like my relationship with Pan Am was really well done. But now that I realize that that dialogue was going to be there 100% of the time, whether I could actually romance her or not, makes it a lot less special. And, and it's not that I need like, you know, 100% unique dialogue per player per person, but it's like, yeah. I thought there was a branching path there where it was like, hey, we should be friends or hey, we should do something more. And then there's another branch, which is like, she's not interested in me at all because of my sex or gender or whatever. But it, hearing you guys talk about it, it sounds like, no, it wasn't that at all. There was just an ending, a slight ending change based on whether you want to romance or yeah. not. There was there was another part with Pan Am that I thought was going to come back to like haunt us. And it's it's that section where um, the glitch always happens when you're trying to go in the window and it blows you back like 400 meters or whatever, mm -hmm. that mission, once you complete that mission, you have the option of egging her on for revenge where you like go, you drive out into like the cave system or whatever, yeah. yep. and you can kill all those guys. Yep. And I was like, I was like, 
I don't know you that, like, I know you a little bit, Pan Am, but, like, I don't know you that well. But if you want some revenge, like, I'm fine going to kill these guys. And I was like, I wonder what's that, what that is going to do to the rest of the game. And it's never brought up again. All, all yeah. one of, the, I think Saul says, like, oh, I see you went and did blah, 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 blah. You shouldn't have yeah. done that. And then it's never brought up. Like, she killed an entire outpost full of people. Me, me and her did. And... It's yeah. just like, well, what did what did that matter to her if the outcome is is ultimately the same? And, and it, it was the leader of a gang that then the gang comes back later, and I'm like, did yeah. we wipe out this entire gang? Yeah, it's there's yeah. like they're like oh, they're like <laughs> I don't know. There's like different chapters of the same gang or something like that. But <sighs> yeah, yeah. But speaking of good things about the story, though, I I I did really like Pan Am as a character, and they're she's great. They're definitely yeah, you know great. there's like there's Pan Am, there's Jackie, there's Johnny, there's Alt Cunningham, just all these characters side or main story that are just really well done and that i became really engaged with and it's like you guys were talking about uh cd project red does fantastic writing and so there were all these scenes and story beats and moments that i was 100 percent invested in the story and the world building and the logic and the plot points um for me the story is the best thing in this game the story moments as well like like will you mentioned the the moment when they're in their fake motel like those little vignettes those little scenes those are the best moments in this game and that's what kept me playing it through all the bugs through all the performance issues through all the other problems i had with it that's the stuff that kept me going was it like that for you guys as well were you as invested in the story yeah i i mean i I loved the writing in this game. I, by by and large, you know, I, there are always issues somewhere, but overall, I really enjoyed the huge cast of characters that make mm. up the the main story. Like Takemura is so cool. He's like he's like yeah. having like your badass grandfather on the team, where he's like <laughs> he, just just what he like texts you, where he's like, oh, I found out how to do whatever. What I'm not gonna do like a racist <laughs> Japanese accent, um, but he, I, I just did it. Um, <laughs> And uh, he, he's he's like fumbling with technology, but he's he's so committed and just so like honor bound to to uh, his not only his job but this family that he's been serving, and the fact that he sort of warms up to you over the course of the game, and like the, just the whole level where you have to get him onto the float. Yeah. Um. Yep. That. First of all, that level is like a masterclass in vertical like level design. Like it is it is it was so fun to go up and down and, you know, dodge like snipers and and try and sneaky stealthy, you know, your way over there. And it's such a it's such a integral part of the main story. And then immediately after that, they like kill Takamura and you I found out later, I felt really bad about it because Johnny's like we got to fucking go. Like you got to you you got to get out of here, man. And I'm like, "All right, I'm going to go. Like I'm just yeah. going to run." I didn't realize that you can save Takamura. You can like go wow. back and save and it pissed me off because you I was like, that. "Of course I want to save him." But they never it's like hit it's like you start in in the room and you have to go left and you have to like crouch through something and it's like it's mm -hmm. like hidden. And I was so pissed off. One that they killed him because I was like he was like one of my favorite characters. Just I would always look forward to missions with him. Yeah. And as soon as it was done, I was like I kept thinking he escaped somehow. Like he's he's gonna come back in the end. But no, you have to physically go and save him, and and he's just he just dies uh, anyway. That's and there, it's no, it's finish, just finish it, it, it was it was one of those things where it was kind of the same thing with River, but on on a on a much more plutonic level where it was like, I cared about this guy yeah. and I, I wanted to see where his story went. And it's just like, if you miss this tiny little thing that opens up the rest of the story, it just, it, it ends yeah. so unceremoniously. And, and I feel like the fact that that happens across so many of the characters and it's not broadcasted to the player effectively is such a huge misstep for, for CD project red. Like I just, it's like yeah. they didn't play test it enough or something. I mean, obviously they didn't. Um, but yeah, I, I was interested to see if you guys had any more moments sort of like that, where it was it was like you got really invested in the story because it was so well written, and then it just was like, okay, like we're 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 done, or I don't know. Yeah. So, I, um, not to interrupt Ian, but I'm interrupting because this Go comes ahead. back around. There was a stream a while back, Ian, where I mentioned to you. That I always I I thought CD Projekt Red always put the optional objectives up there, 
Mm-hmm. And then I came across one that they didn't put up there, and that one is Saving Takamura. Because I was in that level, and mm-hmm. you fall, you like fall through the floor. That's why you're not near him. And Johnny says, let's, let's get the heck out of here. So I'm like, okay, I'll get the heck out of here. Meanwhile, can't navigate that place at all. So I it's find so a staircase, dark. and I start going up, and Johnny goes... What are you doing? You can't save him. I'm like, oh, I guess I'll go save him. So I go all the way up, go into the room, kill all the guys, save Takamura, yeah. and then we leave. And it's funny because in my brain I said, oh, that's stupid. I bet if you don't save him, they just say he got out on his own anyway. Which nope. is crazy that he dies because he's in my one of my endings. And so now I'm wondering who's there if I never saved him. Oh. That's Which is adding a layer to this game where maybe it's it's a little bit not as bad as I think it is. Well, you know, but... maybe maybe that's a good point. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Let's talk about some endings. Will, what what was the ending? I believe there's like five or six. I think it's five possible endings. What was your ending? And I want to hear about more how Takamura was involved. So I love this game up until the point of no return. I think everything after the yep. point of no return is the worst thing that's ever been done in the world. Yes. So the first, so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's worse than the 9/11. Uh, no. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> so, anyways, the okay, I chose the first ending I did was the Arasaka ending, I believe it's called, because your whole stupid game is to get the lady, yeah, that you, the lady's sister. So I'm like, of course, that's the ending I should do. Because it's the whole point of the game was you to get this lady. So I, I do that ending. Um, so you go meet with her. And then Johnny's like pissed the whole time. He's so yeah. he's angry. So, it's, it's, and I he, felt so bad. That I had the exact same reaction. Like, please, please continue. Because I'm going to be nodding well, along. Well, it's crazy because I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm doing this. But they're going to reward me because this is the ending they want. And so I, I do the whole thing. And Johnny's like, oh, screw this. And he like leaves. So then you go... You go to um, you go with her to Arasaka. She brings you to the basement, and then she brings you to the Mikoshi, and she's like, "Oh, ball drop! Here's my father." Yeah, and dun, it's dun, dun. the father AI, like Engram, and he's still alive. Like he saved himself. Oh, as a, before he died. Yeah. and your character, your V's mind is blown, and I'm sitting there as the player going. You have a man in your brain. Yeah, How I is this so hard to understand? And they keep advertising it. There are billboards for the average for the saving I know. Your brain service. I'm like, how is this blowing anyone's mind who's involved right yeah. now? You all know this. So you bring him up to like some board meeting, and then the, he talks for two seconds. And all the board members are like, go from it's not him to oh, it's him. Of course it's him. <laughs> and then. 90% of them die. Yeah. <laughs> like immediately after meeting them. So they all die. And then you go up to uh, take out um, Yo- Yobinoro. Oh, oh, yeah. You oh, fight Adam brother, Smasher, yeah. which is stupid. It was Adam so Smasher is the worst. Yeah. Uh, it's his gun. I picked up. Eat. I did. I fought Adam Smasher twice. And I picked up his gun twice. And it was invisible twice. I system um, reset him. <laughs> That's how I killed him. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so I. I you do that, and then you go up and find Yobinoro, who's naked in a big bathrobe. And then his sister comes up, and she's like, oh, I'll take care of him. And then you think you hear a gunshot or whatever. And then they're like, oh, we're going to take care of you. Have no worry. And then you wake up on a space station in space. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, in space, I, I, Ian. Yep, yeah, that's what we were talking about when you asked if there's space. And I said, I heard there is space, but it's pretty much a cutscene. It is. It's, yeah. it, well, no, this isn't a cutscene. Well, oh, I mean, the other no, I one mean, is the cutscene. It's, it's very much on rails, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Um, so you're you're recovering in a satellite from your surgery or whatever, and then it's it's revealed. I they never really reveal why they're studying you. I assume just for just because people of who's been put into bodies. Yeah. Um, and so then they you say you want to go, and so they reveal that you're going to die soon or you can just dump your consciousness yeah, into you have six, six months to live or yeah. or you can make an engram. So the person mm-hmm. who came to tell me that was Takamura. I had a random doctor. I, really? I, I It was some random doctor told me. And then 
Yeah. I, oh no no no. It was um uh the the doc comes in and you do the tests and stuff. Which, yeah. I had one of which scared the shit out of me when he pulls the blocks apart and it like screams at oh, you. Oh, that it was, was like, terrifying. It was like it was like three in the morning and I <laughs> I like I've never like it's jumped like so hard. Dream. Yeah. It was wow. it was very strange. Anyway, the the guy who comes in and tells you that on my end because Takamura died for me is the the scientist behind Mikoshi. Oh, the, the helmet guy? Yeah, helmet. It's just him. Oh. Helmet's best. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's it. So yeah, that was Takamura for me, which felt kind of out of place. But I was like, oh, Takamura, you're gonna save me or something, and they not. But yeah. it was nice because he's like, hey, it was the classic like, hey, I'm here because they asked me to, but it's also because I care about you because we've been through so much. So I I really like that. And then so I just it was either put my brain into Arasaka cyberspace or go home, and I just chose to go home. Cue third person cutscene, which they didn't remove from the game, and you're just a third third person. Well, I was like, wait, I, look, it's my character. Third person cutscene or third person gameplay? Third person cutscene after yeah. that. I no, I think, I think that was that was Nintendo. Yeah, no, no, I know it's intentional. It's just like, well. it's just crazy. I, I didn't mean they actually forgot to cut it, but it's just like that's the one time they decided to keep I think that's which good. I'm okay with I'm not against but so game I, design. yeah I really <laughs> wish my character was naked for it because it would have been way funnier would have been would have been would have been way mm. more interesting I had I, I did the exact same thing the exact same story because at that point and it's funny you were talking about how much Johnny like broadcasts to you that he's like this is a bad idea like why are you doing this like we've been through so much and I felt bad I was like, yeah. this is clearly what they want me to do because why yeah. would we have gone like through all this? Like why? Like Takamura died so that I could talk to this woman and now she's reaching out to me. I'm gonna go like do what she wants even though I'm not okay with it. And at the very end, I like there's a, there's a moment where it's like, you better call your loved ones. Uh, you know, regardless of what you choose to do, just call them. And I, I called River, and he's like, "Hey, man, I can't talk right now," and then <laughs> hangs up. And I was like, "What the hell is wrong with you?" Like, what? I, I was That's so. That's what Pan did to me. Well, wow. and and he did that, and then you call a couple. You call, like, I romance Carrie because he's literally the only gay person that you can romance. Even though I really don't care for his character that much, um, and he's like, "Yeah, like when you come back, we should like." record some music or something and i was like i'm not going back like I, I did the engram thing because at that point i was so depressed i was just like all right well i obviously chose the worst ending let's make it as bad as it can be and it just ends and you get you know the credits roll and you get the little um uh voice are they voicemails oh, or like so annoying, annoying. Video chats. yeah oh my gosh yeah. they skipped they, they 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 skipped so many people and then freaking two of the guys mitch from Al the aldecados or whatever i was like i don't care about you why are you here at the end victor and, vector uh, sucks v vic should be romanceable what the heck you're not allowed to call me kid uh, we're not friendly enough oh um, my goodness and it was it was so depressing and i like they bring they bring you back after after the point of no return back to before the point of no return yeah. and you get like a couple like items or whatever and it's like there's still more to more to see yeah. and i was like i don't really want to anymore like i just yeah. at least at least not for a minute i think that's when i stopped playing for like a oh. couple days but i was just so I, I was just like empty also the ending in that too you find out through news broadcasts in the longest section not literally, but it's the longest section emotionally in that game. Like, it's just so st stupid and boring is you doing the tests every day. Because they're not faster. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they um, they revealed that they put the father's brain into Yori Nobu. Back in the sun. Yeah, I saw that. And they're like, oh, wow. and they're like trying to compliment, they're trying to talk about the ethics of this on a news show. And it's just like so I, um, stupid. I gotta be honest with you. I think a majority of your complaints are because you guys made a bad decision by trusting Arasaka. <laughs> Cause like, well, I, didn't, okay. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. It was like Arasaka My... and there's another one, which was like, go by yourself with Johnny. And then it was like, call Pan Am and get the Aldecados to help you out. And that's what I chose. And we I had did. A, the, end, the, the ultimate ending was the same, but we had a different path towards it. Yeah. I did try, I, I forgot, I did do the one ending where you, you just commit suicide. Like, yeah. Like, I, I literally saved, because, uh, what's her name, um, takes you up to the, to the, Misty. the rooftop. Misty. Misty. I can't remember her name for some reason. Um, well, I really wish they used her more. Um, yeah. 
because she's there for like Jackie's stuff and she's she fine. Just Pris from Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. exactly. That was my problem with um, her. <laughs> yeah. And um, she takes you up there and it's like, okay, well, here's the decision. So right before you go out on the landing, I saved. And I was like, this is going to be my save point for when I go back and play all the other, you know, endings and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, it, I chose to do the suicide one first, actually, before I did the, the Arasaka ending, because I thought that that would lead to like the most interesting ending. Because it's so, it's so like buried in where it's like, oh, you can yeah. do this, 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 or you can do this. And I was like, what's the interesting one? And then it just, it just basically ends. Um, so that's when I went back and did the Arasaka one. And I knew, and I'm pretty sure, Will, you knew this too, or at least maybe on some level knew it, but it was like, this is a, like, Will, or Ian, you said it, like, this is a bad decision. Like, oh, yeah. You should not trust these corporations, yeah. especially, you know, having worked for the same corporation. And I just, I, I guess maybe CDPR just doubled down on like the, the cynicism and the the mm -hmm. depressing sort of outlook that the the future you know Night City holds, and and it was just, it, I mean, if they wanted me to feel bad at the end of that ending, they did their job because I felt real bad, and I it just, it just didn't feel fulfilling. It didn't feel, not even like in a in a. Oh, it's fulfilling in a way that even though everything sucks, like I still feel like good about my choice. It was just a bad, yeah. unfun choice that yeah. I, I wish I'd never made. Well, I yes. just thought it was stupid that they they pointed you towards this lady for the entire game, and then that's not the like I I Anako, figured right? I, I, not that I I, I would have gone with her eventually, but I figured there was another spot in that lady's mission where you could change again like i thought the split for all of the endings was going to be after i go to arasaka with her like you know what i mean like that's what i was telling yeah. myself like oh i i'm i'm here for her i'm gonna go this next step and then once it wasn't i was like oh it's you sitting there on the rooftop choosing those things well to be clear there there is a choice after you go with her and the choice is do you give johnny your body or do you live for another six months with because uh... he goes with rogue right that's like e well ian what did you actually choose? actually yes. i'm sorry but you may not have had it that so so well before i talk about what i chose so you're telling me that after you get with you get into makoshi you're not given a choice where they're basically like look your body doesn't like your mind anymore so you can either live for six months or you can give your body to johnny no, not in the Arasaka one. No, oh. it, it you get so you, you get definitely the chose to... the wrong ending then. <laughs> yeah. So so the crazy thing is, so I I I did the Pan Am ending, which is basically you meet with Arasaka, and she's like, I want you to do this, and then you're given the choice, etc. And one of the options I had because I because I completed the Pan Am ending and all that stuff was, and I'm I'm guessing you guys had this option as well. Is was really just like call Pan Am and the Aldecados for help. Did you guys have yes. that option? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I did that. And it kicks off uh, completely different missions. Well, mostly different missions where basically you use the basilisk, the tank, to storm a tunneling compound, and then you drive a tunneling machine into the basement of Arasaka, and then you fight your way to that Makoshi. That sounds awesome. It's not awesome, and I'll tell you why. Because no. the performance was <laughs> god-awful during that mission, Ooh. and every time an explosion happened, the entire screen would flash. Um, so it was not. It was it was actually a terrible mission. Let me, um, let me amend that statement. It sounds awesome on PC. <laughs> <laughs> it, honestly, I it was not it was not a console issue. It was like a shader issue. So I think I think oh, it would have been just so bad weird. on PC. But but uh, my point being that um, you then get to a point where it's you, Johnny, and Alt in cyberspace talking about what to do, and you're given the option. You're basically told you have six months left to live. You can either live that with your body, or you can put your mind in cyberspace, and Johnny gets your body. So you, so you guys had the same thing where you can put your mind in cyberspace, but Johnny doesn't get your body? They extract Johnny. Johnny was already he's, gone. He's, Johnny he's was gone. already gone. Yeah. But and in the other death, ending I did... <laughs> In the other exactly. ending, I Wait, did. Real quick. I love the ending that you guys chose, and the reason why I love it is because you you made the wrong choice and you got screwed over for it, and you guys are mad yeah. that you got screwed over for it. But I'm like, you made the wrong well, choice. You well, got what okay. You I'm not mad. I just so, felt like the game was leading you that way the entire time. So you don't. I, I wouldn't say you necessarily get screwed over for it because you're you still get to choose. Like I think with all the endings, you either get to choose to do something or live for six months. 
right? Yeah. Other, other yes, than I other than so. Johnny getting your body. So it ultimately yes. leads up to something like that. So it's yes. like you do have that option, even if you do have the Arasaka ending that me and Will had, you could still, you know, conceivably go live out the rest of your life for six months. And and then if you do that, doesn't um Hanako like contact you? She's like, I know you only have six months to live, but do you want to do some more jobs for us? Like she's <laughs> like, I think that's one of the credit things, um, which I oh. thought was funny. Oh, I but, get that. That your ending, Ian, sounds at least like it sounds like a the the oh, right ending. That I'm you're sorry. Let me just let me just finish the ending real quick. So so yeah, go for it. So so yeah. So basically, you're with the Aldecados, and you get this really nice like story beats where basically you become an Aldecado. They're like, listen, we're helping you out with this. You're in a major moment, but you've helped us out so much that you're going to be a member of our family now, and you're joining us, and we're helping you out. And Saul's like, listen, I don't necessarily want to help you but your family now and Pan Am wants it. So I'm going to help Pan Am and that means helping you. And you get this like fantastic, lovely moment. And um, there's some people that die, but Mitch thanks, thankfully lives. And then Yay. at the very end, if you choose to live another six months, it's you and Pan Am and Mitch, and you're making a run for the border wall around Night City. And you get through a storm, a, a sandstorm, and you come out of the border wall and then it kicks into third person and you climb out of the tank with Pan Am and you just have this like loving moment on this tank where you're like, we're finally free. We can go anywhere we want. Where should we go? And they're like, let's go to Tucson. Great. Oh, and it's like, Oof. it's just this incredibly loving, touching moment. And you know what? I, the only thing I'm upset about with that ending is that is that the corner, the the like the like ending choice, et cetera, is the same across all of them where it's like, you have six months left to live, et cetera. So the, the 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 details of the ending you can't really change but yeah. why can't there be an ending where it's like they figure it out like you go to the yeah, right yeah. people and it's like you exactly. can live the rest of your life you know exactly like, that's what well, I want. so yeah ian in your ending when you're in cyberspace with alt are you playing as v yes i'm playing as v okay so i after i did the arasaka ending i went and did the rogue johnny ending and that's where you that's where Johnny takes so over your I body gave, and you're playing as Johnny. So I gave Johnny control. You play as Johnny throughout the whole thing. Rogue dies, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, you get to the point where you go into cyberspace in Mikoshi, you plug your brain in. Those scenes in cyberspace, I was Johnny and V was there with me. Yes. Hmm. So I'm Johnny. So I did that ending twice. So the first time they say, um, or Alt says, hey, get in the well. You'll take V's body over. You can live forever or whatever. Yeah. Or cross into cyberspace so i took v's body over and you're johnny and you go and you meet this stupid kid you buy him a guitar <laughs> then you go to the the uh cemetery you put rogue's gun in you put v's necklace in then you get on a bus and you just leave, leave. night city yeah and then if you go into cyberspace as johnny v gets really pissed off then she comes out and now she's running afterlife and you're doing one final gig and then you have a whole sequence where you're flying a spaceship is that like with the, the blue blue eyed man or whatever yeah with the blue eyed yeah. man and you're in yeah. space and then you open a hatch and it goes to third person and she has like a gun and then it, i don't know if it's you, like a casino that's great you're like yeah, yeah you're, you're like going to fight heist. a casino yeah. but yeah. the camera like flashes around your face or, like so i was like is she decompressing decompressing oh. herself or something i was like really confused it just sounds like a shader error <laughs> yeah, i was just gonna say it sounds like a no it thing. was it was the gas coming out of the helmet and oh. she like makes a pained face and i'm like wait did she just what oh anyways I... those are the all the endings i did yeah so, so I, I think i like that you play johnny in that stuff yeah i i think the crazy thing is we've been talking about these endings for like 20 plus minutes now and i think the crazy thing is I'm going to disagree with you, Will. I think the endings are the best part of this game. And the reason why I'm going to say that is taken individually, I don't think any of them are incredibly well done, except for maybe the, the ending part of the Pan Am one that felt like incredibly touching. It's more that that's one of the very few places in the game where your choices actually matter and there are actually divergent paths. And even though like we, we admit they all come back to that like six months decision, do you want to stay alive or, yeah. or go to cyberspace? The ending after that is different as well, based on what you chose before it. And so those endings, even though in our discussion we're, we're painting them as controversial and not, you know, perfectly implemented, 
I feel like that should have been the entire game is all these different paths crisscrossing. You know, like like if you decide to say in a certain mission, Rogue, I'm not going to help you, then she becomes not necessarily a full enemy to you, but she's closed off for the rest of the game. And it feels like that doesn't happen. It's only yeah. in the ending that these choices actually matter. And you actually have different missions that you were going to go down. Um, yeah, I think those are good. Like, I, I'll agree with you there. I think the way they implemented it is great. My anger was, I, I, I think... I'm angry that it doesn't match the rest of the game. I, yeah. Like it was annoying coming into the endings and like, oh, now my choices matter. Now you're, you put me on a linear path. And now in order to see how this game ends, I have to do it six different times. Yeah. Like that that's what I didn't like. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm, I think I'm more, I definitely understand what you're saying, Ian. And it's, it, it the fact that they did i think what is it there's like 16 different endings or something like that i think i forget what the what the number there, is i think there's five ending paths but then each of them has two choices at the end so so it probably does add up to more than five but there's basically five okay. it's like it's like arasaka rogue aldicados do it by yourself and then i think there's one other well the suicide yeah, i think the suicide. I, I think it's five yeah okay all right. Well, and I mean, regardless of how many there are, like it is, it is cool that they took the time to make those paths available to you. But mm -hmm. it's like the rest of the game does not do that. Like yeah. it's it it yep. just doesn't it doesn't have that same cohesion that the the endings do. And I think that's where me and Will are sort of like, well, this isn't reflective of the rest of the game. This isn't reflective of the rest of my experience of the game. And it just, yeah. I, I think it was it was like a. <laughs> this is a weird way of putting it. It's like it was like a letdown because it was so good. It was like yeah. it was sort of like why like they have this high water watermark moment where you have all these different choices that can really impact your character in different ways, but only at the end of the story. Everything else is yeah. you know boilerplate kind of normalcy. Yep, yep. So let's let's move away from the story and let's talk about mechanics. Um, I'm just gonna kick it off. I'm just gonna throw some cinder bombs here. The stealth in this game was awful. Uh, I didn't like it. It felt like the enemy AI was terrible both in fight and in, de in, in detecting you. There were definitely moments where it felt like I had dropped out of a combat situation, but everybody was still actively looking for me, even though I wasn't in combat. So I gave up on stealth. I stopped giving myself skill points and a majority of my ability points because that skill tree is god awful. I knew there were cool yeah. abilities in there, but it was so hard to find the cool abilities and to stack them and to figure out what was going on that I just gave it up completely. Um, the gunplay most was good. Of, Driving was bad. Most... Sorry, go ahead. I, I, I just uh, wanted no. to throw out some. That's kind of my core core take on the mechanics is that I think a majority of them were bad and poorly implemented, especially the side missions, the gigs, the side quests, the the fixers, etc. All of that. Uh, so Kyle, yeah, you go ahead. I want to hear your your take on that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The the skill trees are terrible. Like the the advantages that they give you are often so minuscule and mm -hmm. so so just like okay, like you could, like I always looked to the edges of the skill trees to see like what's like normally it's like what's the best thing you can get. It's, you have to work your way towards it and and, yep. and upgrade your path. And it was like. I played a net runner basically, so I, I did a lot of like hacking and, and quick hacking and stuff like breaching of uh, the protocol breaching and stuff like that. So I didn't really engage with combat that much. And the end of the, like the, the the outside of the quick hacking skill tree doesn't really give you anything. All the cool updates and, and upgrades and stuff that you can do, I felt like you had to go to a ripper dock for it and you just yeah. had to spend money. like. The double jump, the um, mm -hmm. you, you can upgrade like your visor and stuff like that. You can buy the um, the pinging, like like you can upgrade the pinging system so that basically it's like you walk into a hostile thing, you ping one camera and it just shows everything. And you can yeah. individual like you don't even have to like move. You can just like look at people through walls and be like system reset, system reset, system reset. And that's sort of how I played it, which you know is not fun for everybody, but I kind of like that sort of hacking thing. But the, the skill trees had n almost nothing to do with that other than upgrading your RAM, like upgrading yeah. the amount of slots that you could do. And even then, you could just buy other stuff to do that for you. So yeah. it, it, it was, it just didn't feel like it was an effective use of my time and the experience that I gained. And also, even t when you when you do like, you know, 40, 50 hours into the game, once you've beaten the, the main story, 
um, and you go back and you're just doing side missions, it felt like I got less experience points. Like after after that, but like oh, it took wow. me for forever to upgrade my quick hacking to like I think it had to be like level 16 when you could finally unlock like the very last one. It took mm -hmm. me like another 15 to 20 hours to unlock that, just from level f like 14 to 16, and yeah. it was. It was such a grind, and I, it kind of makes me wish that I just picked like a brawler or, 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 or you know, chosen to play in that style or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, because so. I, I would say I, I don't think the brawler or the gunfighter skills were any better because a lot of them were just like five percent, you know, reload speed on shotguns, or you know, like ten percent aim down sight speed on sniper rifles, like stupid things like that. But I could definitely see how. Those are a lot more straightforward where I wasn't putting ability points in, but I was still fine shooting people. I feel like I would not have been able to do that if I was a net runner. I would have had to deal with the skill trees and I just didn't yeah. want to do that. Yeah. I, oh. And I agree. I, I think the skill trees were useless and I never went, like I went to a Ripper Dock maybe twice. Mm -hmm. So that's making me think like they should have either done all skill tree or all upgrades or like, I feel like all the uh, skill tree and upgrades should have just been at a Ripper Dock. Like the like the like yeah. the the stuff you put on your body should have just been the skill tree things. Yeah, if, yeah. if that makes sense. And the the like weird you're... thing is that they don't explain to you about the Ripper Docks. It, like at least if they did explain it, I it's missed barely it. Barely done. Barely done. Diff different Ripper Docks sell specialize in different things. Oh what? Like you mm -hmm. have to like to get the double jump, you can only go to certain Ripper Docks, or to get the um. The gorilla hands for like punching or whatever yeah. you have to go to certain ripper docks oh. and or or find them in story missions but you barely ever find them um so i was like i i literally spent like two hours going to different ripper docks before i found the <laughs> right one and it's in like it's in like the middle of like the corpo center or something mm -hmm. like that and i was like finally and she has a little like dialogue thing you can talk to her and she's like oh i'm covering uh, the store for my uncle, who's like the normal Ripper Doc, but I'm experienced. She was like from Russia and everything. I was like, this is so cool. Never talk to her again. Like you, you <laughs> don't have anything to do with her ever again. And it was just, I don't know. It was, it was kind of well, like, I did the just, first. No, no, you finished, finished that. No, no, no. I was all I was gonna say was it just it didn't feel as like fully realized as it should have been. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say the first 18 hours of the game I played without realizing i thought you always just had two slots for the net runner stuff for the ram like I, yeah <laughs> like you only no no for the ram for the for the abilities oh, for the oh like oh, i kept oh, just yeah. switching them out like the slots and then i finally stuff. realized you could get i don't know what part of it is you can update but it's like just like five it, and plus at the end of the game uh rogue gives you boots that like you can jump from any height and then you levitate and land I'm like, why, why are you giving these to me now? Are these available in the game? Like, <laughs> this is a cool thing that I can now use. I, you know, speaking of cool things, I feel like the skill tree and ability and the cyberware implementation and Ripper Dock, etc. I feel like this is the biggest failed implementation of this game. And the reason why I say that is because I keep seeing webms and gifs and video clips of people who have maxed out their netrunner skills or maxed out all these other skills and they're doing things you know like like kyle you were saying like they're walking to an area and just like boop, 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 immediately everybody's down you know by hacking them or they're literally like running 30 miles per hour through an area and just like one hit one hit one hit one hit double jumping just doing all these crazy things slowing down time and it's like why wasn't I doing that in the game? And then I realized it's because it was hidden behind all these awful yeah. UI implementations, all these like fragmented skills, abilities, hardware, cyberware, ripper dock, etc. And it was so obfuscated that I didn't even realize you could do that, let alone get to that. And it's just the game, I, I, I was basically just playing it straight shooter and the shooting's okay, the guns are a little boring, and I was definitely bored of that by the end of the game. But if I knew those abilities were there, I would have had so much more fun. It's just you didn't even know they were there because they're so yeah. hard to find. I, I will say Skippy was awesome. I miss I miss Skippy. Um, if you guys did the... Skippy. Skippy. You didn't... Oh my gosh, you guys didn't do Skippy? That... Okay, no, I don't know... Skippy, I don't... And then I'll tell you why I didn't do Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably know why you didn't do Skippy. I don't know if it's actually... Yeah, I think it's a side mission. It should be on the map. It's in one of the alleyways or something like that. Anyway, you find this this guy who's dead. He's like next to a dumpster. And he's got a pistol on him. 
called Skippy, and it's got a hologram in it, like an AI, and it pops up, and it's this like bullet, like cartoon bullet with like a smiley face on it, and it talks mm -hmm. to you, That's and it's like, hello, would you like to, you know, initialize for a new user? And you have a choice between doing a hundred. It's a smart pistol, so you have a choice between doing a hundred percent headshots, no matter where you look, um, yeah. at an enemy, or or doing um. It's like baby faced pacifist or something like that, where it's like it'll only do body shots, even even if you're like right next to the person. Yeah. And once you kill 50 people with that gun, it, it like if you, if you do the sort of murdery option and just do headshots, which is what I did, it says like you, you've you are a psychopath for killing 50 people or whatever. And it basically shuts off that feature. And then if you continue to use the gun, you find out that um, is it Reyes, the 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 woman from who keeps giving you missions from the the uh, NCPD. Yeah, I think it's Reyes. Oh forget, yeah, I yeah, I, yeah, I believe so. It's her Regina? gun, or Regina, Regina. Regina. It's it's her gun, and mm -hmm. she like lost it, and the, basically sh you give it to her, and she resets the AI, and then she doesn't give it back to you, and it's oh, like okay. Uh, oh okay, but it was it was a cool little like side mission where. Yeah. And it was a pretty powerful gun. I ended up doing... Did you... Well, what did you guys main as far as guns? Did, was it pistols, uh, shotguns? I did that Black Widow sniper rifle. Yeah, I did. I, I did. I, I, w I was trying to do smart weapons a little bit, but I want to say about halfway through, like 12 hours in, I got a sniper rifle. And I, I just did, kept that in my inventory. That sniper rifle is OP. It was insane. I don't the, think I The Black Widow sniper, sniper I rifle. had... Is it the one uh, from Pan Am? Yeah, well, it, but, but it killed everyone gets, in one shot, no matter what. But the one from Pan Am is not special. It's just, it's just, because it, I had one before I went to Pan Am that was exactly the same. It was just uh, slightly less power. But the thing about the sniper rifle is you get the range on it, and the enemy AI is so terrible that usually the first three or four shots you get off, they don't even realize it. And like Will said, for whatever reason, the damage is like, it's like 6,000 damage per shot. Yeah, so you're crazy. pretty much killing every single person except for a boss with one hit some some required to but yeah. most of the time is one hit and it was just it so was way I, too like, I like never used the sniper rifles i pretty much mained pistols and then the last like 30 hours that i played i used this one revolver and i put a silencer on it and i i played on um uh an xbox one controller on on my pc just because i think it the driving is way better if you're playing yeah not on keyboard because it's terrible on keyboard and if you play with that on, it, it gives you pretty severe auto aim. So it was basically yeah. like having an auto aim perk <laughs> where it was like I could headshot like five people in a row with one revolver and it, they, it, they would just instantly die. It was like mm. 16,000 or, or whatever, whatever the, the thing is, because it was a ridiculously overpowered revolver. But it was yeah. like at the and that was, you know, before I even finished the game. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, all right, well, I'm just going to use this for the rest of the entire game. And yeah, and then if I just, you, I think you just find your like niche and stick with it. Yeah, um, I, I didn't yeah. ever feel a need to try anything else out. Yeah, but to, but to talk about Skippy, so I didn't see Skippy, and it's because I pretty quickly realized that all of the gigs and all of the on map missions were stupid and pointless because they were basically identical, and that a majority of the side missions, or at least I would say like 70% of the side missions I tried were just not interesting enough. And there was, yeah. it was only, I would only do side missions that were with characters I enjoyed, like Pan Am or Rogue or, or some some other people. Like I think I did a Misty one, et cetera. And, and I would follow it for the story, but it just feels like when you take the total amount of missions in this game, whether it be main mission, side mission, a gig or an on map icon mission, 90% of them are just identical slash boring slash dull. And that was really upsetting to me especially when you have fixers constantly calling you to do their stupid little gigs. Yeah, so annoying. I, I I will. Did you feel the same way? Uh yeah, I I just thought it was all and uh, yeah, I thought it was all useless, not useless, but it's just like all the ones I did were just seemed so arbitrary or dumb or just like a simple thing. And even yeah. like I was like, "Oh, cool, they added racing to this game. I should go race." Like do a, I did it's one race so easy to win. I did one race in which mm -hmm. they constantly spawned the cars ahead of me the entire race. I watched them pop in. I watched my thing go from first to third like four times Ugh. as they spawned the cars in front of me. And uh, this wasn't me, but my coworker Chris 
uh, found out by accident that if during a race you just stop, all the cars stop behind you oh and gosh. don't finish the race. Wow. wow. They just sit there and wait for you. That's crazy. <laughs> are those so, the, are those the races with the bartender? Yeah, at, Claire? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, okay. I did one of them and I won it and I was like, this is this is the amount of racing I need to do in this game. The driving in this game feels exactly like riding a horse in Witcher or Skyrim, where it's like, yeah, it gets me around, but it feels terrible. <laughs> and I, and did I was you ever just, buy a car? I never. Bought I a did. Car. I, I did. never bought a car. So, I got Johnny's car, so I was fine. One of the one of the cool things about the net running stuff is you get a lot of money pretty quickly. Like if you oh, do side great. missions, you get like th there's the little things where it's like jack in, and it can be like a. a telephone yeah. pole or something like that and if you just do the the hacking mechanic or whatever it'll yep. give you like three thousand dollars so if you just do yeah. that constantly That's you rack up money i i, I loved I, I really did not care for the driving overall in this game but i actually really liked jackie's arch his motorcycle it, it's oh. so fun to drive like like just the you can hand i mean it's not obviously supposed to handle like that in real life but like the way that the mechanics work, you basically just sliding everywhere, and it was it was pretty fun. Yeah. Um, but like the the upgrade path for the cars, it's it felt like it felt like the the little dinky cars, like the top the bottom like ten percent, all drove the same, and then the yes. middle seventy percent all drove the same, and then the upper thirty percent all drove or twenty yeah. percent all yeah. drove you know the same, and um, it, it like I bought the two most expensive cars. And the most expensive car is worse than the second less the second most expensive <laughs> car, um, and it's it, I forget what it's the Guinevere or the or the Gu Guinevere or whatever it was, and and it was like well I wish I didn't spend you know two hundred fifty thousand eddies or whatever on it but now I have it I guess but yeah yeah it it felt a lot like I kept thinking about Grand Theft Auto and how in Grand Theft Auto I love a lot of those cars like one of the one of the most popular cars is called the Karen. And it's just this like, it's like a Volkswagen Jetta sedan basically, but it just handles so well that people love to do it. Or the Futo, which is like the smart car. Like there are so many, like like each car has a unique feeling to it. And even the worst cars at least feel in a unique way. But in Cyberpunk, it's exactly like you say, Kyle, there's maybe four or five different car types. And then within that, maybe one will have a plus one to speed or a minus one to the, to the top speed. Yeah but they all just felt the same and the baseline feeling was just black and it it, yeah. it it it's just like a lot of the mechanics in this game were just i'm just struggling to think of mechanics that i actually enjoyed you know we already talked about how the skills weren't that good how a majority of the missions are, are bland the driving's not great I, I wasn't even that big of a fan of the hacking mini game i guess it was okay yeah I, Which I didn't cool when you got all not, three. Yeah, that was exactly. fun, but yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I can't. It was. Just, it, it just felt. I think the reason why, at least maybe a lot of people are having this reaction, is like everything just felt, as far as mechanics go, mediocre. It was yeah. just okay. It was just good enough and and just okay. And if you're launching a game with just okay with an advertising, you know, massive humongous marketing deal you know with with major companies and you're telling people that it's going to be the next big leap in whatever it is that you're doing and you don't deliver it's like it makes mediocre feel like the worst thing in the world yeah like it just it, it's just like okay well that's not that at all so now i have reason to be pissed off at you know while playing this game and i don't know that's not to say i didn't have fun i did have a lot of fun with it but sparingly yeah, hundred percent agree. So, so as we as we kind of come towards the tail end of this, we talked about performance, we talked about graphics, we talked about story, we talked about mechanics. Any other topics or or areas you want to bring up before we kind of give our overall impressions and, and close this thing out? Uh, I'll probably think of something at two in the morning, but for now, yeah. I mean, I feel like I feel like we kind of we kind of covered believe it but i feel like we kind of covered everything yeah i mean i already talked about the music yeah. was great oh. like I, I loved the music oh yeah music, music was very I, good. I i told will this like as soon as I, the game launched for the first time i sat on that menu for like a minute because it was it's just so like, good 
is perfectly i think the aesthetic of this game they really nail it from how people are talking how people look how the technology is how everything's going all the different themes in it was great will you have something to say or are you just squeezing the, the only thing i want to say is this i don't know if you guys heard this rumor i might have mentioned it before but it makes a lot of sense is johnny and everyone was originally only supposed to happen a year ago and then they changed it to 50 years and I feel like everything in that world still feels like it was a year ago. Because when you play those 2013 yeah. segments, nothing has changed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean like the city itself doesn't look Yeah, so different. like yeah. originally Johnny was only only died a year ago. Like the Arasaka bombing was a year ago. But they switched it to 50 years ago. So I think, yeah. I think that's very telling in the game. I meant to bring that up at the story section, but just splice that in. Ian, I can see it. that. Oh. It, and I can see where they I can see where they patched it back as well because like there's like the really yeah. I don't know if you guys ran across him but there's this really old guy who collects samurai records and he's like yes, yeah when I was a kid great. I and it's like okay well that wouldn't work if it was a year ago but then at the same time it's like uh, I, I see exactly what you mean I can I agree with you and you can tell they they tried to patch it by adding in extra stuff on top yeah it just seemed weird now that it's pointed out <laughs> um I, I will say there there's some things. One of this complaint didn't hit me as hard because it's not something I do a lot in open world games, but the city in this game is particularly lifeless. And by that, I mean, people were talking about how they would try and follow people to see what their routines were or to watch people. And you're not going to get any satisfaction from that. People have very short loops. They don't have lives of their own. It's not like Red Dead Redemption 2, where you can kind of follow people and see where they live and run into them multiple times. Everybody else's background. They're just window dressing and there's almost nothing there. You can't go into buildings, etc. It's if it's not related to your mission or your quest, it's not gonna happen for you. So even though the world is beautiful, it's definitely not a living world that encourages you to explore. I I said that same thing on Twitter, where it was like you you can't say that your game is is the next generation, the big leap for. I keep saying this, but it just really bugs me. You can't say that to somebody that it's going to be the next big thing, and do exactly what everyone else does. If I, yeah. if if it's going to be an actual next generation open world, open city game, I want to be able to go into pretty much any door, if even if I have to break it down. Yeah, I, I want there to be something behind it. I don't want it to just be doors locked. Okay, I'm a net runner. I'm pretty sure I can hack a door, yeah. but you can't. And wow. and just stuff like stuff like that. Like I went back and looked at um, the uh, I think it was one of the E3 showcases, basically where you where V walks out into the, the the promenade part where everyone was like, "Holy crap! Look at all those people!" And one, none of the people in the game, none of the the NPCs in the game react the way they do in that video. So yeah. you know that obvious obviously you know that was done on purpose um but yeah the fact that the fact that they marketed it as being it's a full day and night life cycle like you can follow anybody and if you look at someone and look away and look back and they disappear that's definitely not it you know like it's it's i don't know it, it, it it's not even the fact that it's per, not even persistent like it can't yeah. even support the fact where it's like you look away and it and it and it disappears like that just i, I don't know how they how they reasoned that that would be okay to to ship yeah um, it, and again I, I, sorry not to not to keep bragging right. on this um but the the fact that one i think management definitely took over the 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 release of this game rather than the devs and two it was just mind-bogglingly overhyped and and over over yeah. uh under delivered so yeah i i, I would say not necessarily to sum up what you're saying, but what I'm hearing from you is this is not a next gen title. It is very no. much a a it is barely even a current state of open world game. It is. Yeah, it's, even when, it's, I, even it's when I think an about alpha. like, like yeah, <laughs> even, even when I think about like Breath of the Wild or Yakuza or these other open world games that are pushing things further or doing the current status, but doing it very well. Cyberpunk doesn't even meet that standard. It has a great. It's like, great story missions but it is not an open world game and i would even i wouldn't even really call it an rpg game because it, it it's it just doesn't have a whole lot of choices or a whole lot of avenues and some of those avenues like i would argue the stealth etc is not well implemented and is not worth going down so it's it's 
pretty much just it's it's just I would say treat it like a linear game and you'll have fun with it. Didn't they seventh change seventh skill? Seventh skill. Oh, oh yeah, that one at the bottom. Oh my gosh, I completely <laughs> forgot about what that. I don't know that? what it is. Did we ever figure that I out? I thought that it would be I thought that it would be revealed like you see that at, announced at the DLC ending. already. I I'm bet it's gonna be in there. I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> I'm gonna Google That's it. Ridiculous. What is? I, I seriously thought it was a glitch for a while, and it was like maybe something's gonna be revealed. Didn't they also change the the one of the things on the actual like physical um, posters for the game? It went from being an RPG, like listed as an RPG, to being listed as action adventure. Oh, right? Wow. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it turns out, at least a quick Google, that sixth skill is never revealed in the game, so we still don't know what it is. So that's they, some real, that's wonky. That's they said boy. that in the E3 thing, they were like, they talked about the skills, and I think everyone assumed, oh, it's something really cool that will be in the game. They're just not talking about it now. Where I they never were like, saw in it. it. I never unlocked it. Why would you put it there? No idea. And it's so prominent uh, too. It's not like it's hidden away. It's like right there. Like yeah. you can hold the button on it, and it fills up and doesn't unlock. Like. Man, it maybe there? it's like sex appeal or something, or like bad DLC promo. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead. Let's start wrapping this up. We've said a lot of things, but let's let's kind of go around the horn and give give like our final closing thoughts. You know, quick quick summation or something you want to say. I'll, I'll start it off. I know I'm not doing a good job of describing what I want from you guys, but I, I would say if you're at all interested in Cyberpunk 2077, go ahead and play it. There are a lot of people saying that you should wait for patches or you should wait for it to get better. The issues this game has, it's not going to get better. Some of the bugs may be fixed, but they are not going to fix these core problems with the mechanics, etc. But that being said, there is more than enough gameplay there right now and there's more than enough enjoyment for you to go ahead and pay the 60 bucks and play the game. Just don't play it on PS4 or Xbox One. Play it on PC if it can handle it. Play it on PS5, play it on Series X. And my recommendation, honestly, mainline the story missions and just do the side missions with the characters that you find enjoyable. That's my recommendation. I think if you do that and you go on with blinders a little bit and you know what this game is, you're still gonna have more than enough fun enjoying it and you don't have to wait for patches because they're not gonna fix the core issues with this game. They're just gonna fix some of the minor bugs. Um, Will, how about you? What, what do you got to say? I was just gonna say, if you wanna play Cyberpunk 2077, go play any deus ex game or go play shadow run for the sega genesis it is they are all much better cyberpunk games um this is still an okay game but just it's bad and not good um i might might go play the pan am ending uh you now that to, you've described well, it but here's the thing the mission it's not great because it's not well done so i would just watch i would watch somebody yeah, do it uh, I would just, I'll probably just play it. It'll take me, what, 20 But minutes. honestly, you shouldn't because you picked the wrong ending and you deserve to live with that. We should stick with <laughs> our, stick with our misery. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, I'm, I'm going to uninstall it because it's huge on my Series X. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm thoroughly disappointed with the game. I mean, across the board. I, it just, ne it wasn't ever going to live up to hype hype, but I was never up that high. Um, but yeah, it was just very disappointing because I was just looking for a, a game to take my time and it really wasn't that. Yeah. Kyle, closing thoughts? Yeah, I mean, really just echoing a lot of what you guys said. I, I found it fun at moments. I found the story really engaging at moments and I found a lot of the mechanics to be really unhelpful just all the time, almost constantly. And a lot of, a lot of the game is confusing because it's, it's, uh, again, like you said, Ian, it's obfuscated from the player almost on purpose. And if you just care about playing a game with a really good story that takes its time and is fully developed and, and you know, by, by a team of people who released it when they wanted to, go play Red Dead 2. You know, go, go play. Even though there are definitely issues with that game, it's definitely more fully realized than, than Cyberpunk is right now. And again, stop pre-ordering games. Stop just stop it. Stop doing it. <laughs> yep. 
Well, folks, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, th this isn't a new series. This isn't necessarily a new format. This is just something we had to get out there. We had to talk about Cyberpunk 2077. I know all three of us, as you just heard, we had a crazy experience with the game and we really just needed to talk through it. Um, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more of it, or if you've got your own Cyberpunk 2077 comments, go ahead and comment on this video, like this video, hit the uh, subscription, hit that bell, do whatever you got to do so YouTube starts paying attention to us more and that you see more of our videos we love to see it thank you guys so much for joining thanks will thanks kyle thank you cd project red for thank giving you. us uh a real interesting game that gave us an hour and a half worth talking about um thanks for watching subpixel you can find us more at subpixelfilms.com we'll see you guys later bye bye, bye.